Hello, my name is Greg, and I'd like to welcome you to another edition of installing GNS3 um, as well as configuring it. Um, in this edition, I'm going to install uh, GNS3 1.4.x. And the reason for the X is because the versions don't normally change that often as far as how it gets installed or what gets installed. Um, that will probably change in the next major release, which will be 1.5.0. Um, this version is 1.4.6, and uh, if you have already install GNS3 before, go ahead and uninstall it. You can pause the video for me if you want and then come back. Okay, if you have that uninstalled and you're ready to proceed, the first thing you want to do <coughs> is to log in to uh, GNS3's website uh, right here at HTTPS uh, colon forward slash forward slash genus3.com and um, click on software and then um, that will take you to this page you hit download it will ask you to log in if you haven't already um, and it will let you download the program um, the easier way to to uh, find the, the uh, latest GNS3 release is to go to this https colon forward slash forward slash github dot com forward slash gns3 forward slash gns3 dash gui slash releases if you go there uh, again right there uh, it'll bring you to this page which will show you the latest pre-release which is the one you don't want <clears throat> the reason for that is because it may be buggy um, so you want to wait till it's uh, at least the latest release which as I mentioned currently is 1.4.6 so if you scroll down to here um, the two files you want to get from this web page is this file <coughs> excuse me, and this file. And from here, once you have those, uh, it shouldn't take too long to download. Um, half a gig for both, or a little less than half a gig. Um, once you have those, you want to unzip this file and put it in a folder, um, as I'll show you in a minute. Um, and then the other thing you need is the latest version or at least a recent version of VMware um, uh, VMware workstation player uh, to get that you basically go to VMware uh, at myvmware.com and um, go to downloads and it'll bring you to this web page right here go to the very bottom and click right here for VMware workstation player once you have all three of those uh, the first thing you want to do is install VMware and then once you've done that um, it'll bring this window up um, it's pretty much it's very simple to install it's there's no other than the me if you want to change the path uh, it's next 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 to get to the end and then once you have this up we we have to um, import the VM so let's do that right now um, I have uh, in a folder structure before we get going I'll show you I have this uh, under the C root I have this genus 3 folder structure and the reason I created this out here as opposed to inside the actual genus 3 folder is I un uninstall and reinstall genus 3 every time they come out with a new version so this is a more centralized way of maintaining all of my configs, documentation, images, layouts, so on and so forth for GNS3. 
so I don't have to worry about it getting deleted or, or and it's also easier to find since it's in the C root um, you could put it on any drive like your D drive whatever but I put it right here so basically um, the the VM that we need is found in this file that you just downloaded so you want to unzip that and I did that and here's the file that's inside of it it's a genus 3 vmova file and basically that's the, what we need to install into VMware so let's do that right now so open up a virtual machine and we'll go ahead and hit open and import and let it install Now, um, I probably should have mentioned earlier, if you had VMware, I mean, uh, uh, Genus 3, I should say, before, um, the only thing you needed to uninstall was the Genus 3. You don't have to uninstall the, um, you don't have to uninstall Wireshark or WinPCAP or the SolarWinds response time view or any of that um, just the GNS3 and that's what we're going to install in this video so now that we got that VM in there it's ready to go one thing to keep in mind is that the new GNS3 opens up this VM every time you load GNS3 so you want to make sure that this workstation player is closed prior to running GNS3 otherwise it will give you an error saying that uh, it needs to take control uh, I forget what the term it used but anyways that's pretty much it in a nutshell so the way to get it to work is close out of VMware player so if you have a VM loaded you know close out normally um, close out of Genus 3 reopen Genus 3 and then it will open it so let's go and close this so that way we don't get that error uh, all right, so now we're ready. Uh, before I go to install Genus 3, let me show you this images folder. So in here we got this iOS folder. Inside here I got all my Dynamips um, images, as well as my IOU images, which is iOS on Unix, um, which has a Layer 2 switch and a Layer 3 router. So basically, um, if you're going to do IOU, you need to have these two uh, files, or at least two uh, files, 1L3, 1L, uh, 1L3, and 1L2, if you want to do switching. And then you also need this IOURC license file. And this is obtained by getting it from Cisco. Um, some people have created their own using uh, some Python. Um, uh, program but you obtain it from Cisco as, long, uh, as well as the iOS's um, one thing to mention I do not provide those so please don't ask I do not want the FBI knocking on my door saying hey you gave this file to so-and-so or getting sued by Cisco so anyways um, so please don't ask I don't give those files out as I mentioned in my previous videos uh, it's not I don't want to share I just don't want to get in trouble <laughs> so uh, anyways so now we know about that the QEMU is the ASA uh, one thing to note on um, the older 1.3.13 um, GNS3 and older worked with these files the newer 1.4.0 and newer uh, uses ASAV which is I believe a virtual machine that gets installed within GNS3 so if you need these you may want to stick with the older 1.3.13 um, or at least install it as a separate in a step separate folder you may call it you know uh, GNS3 uh, you know 1.3.x or something like that so that way you know that this that will work with these the older ASAs so let's go ahead and install GNS3 um, 
Oops, let's go up to here. So here's the GNS3 all-in-one I mentioned earlier. So we're going to go ahead and install that. Let's run that. Now one thing to note is because I've already in had GNS3 installed before, I don't personally install um, I, I don't install the um, Wireshark and the WinPCAP and all the other f uh, external software, uh, SolarWinds, Response Time Viewer, uh, every time. So I usually uncheck those, as you'll see in a minute. So if you haven't installed the, if you haven't installed it before, or you completely are starting fresh. Um, I'll show you in a minute. You want to keep those boxes checked. So go ahead and hit agree. I agree, I should say. Um, this I usually leave the same unless you want to have, again, uh, two separate versions of GNS3. Then you can put it as GNS3 version whatever. Um, go ahead and hit next. Uh, so these are the ones I was talking about. I already have these installed, so I don't need to install them again. Um, they're pretty straightforward. The only one that actually does anything other than next uh, is the SolarWinds response time, which at some point during the installation, it asks you for a email address. So I'm not going to install those because I don't need need to. So uh, we'll go and hit next. If you need to see how that's done, you can look at some of my older videos. It's the same with the old GNS3 all the way back to 1.3. So we'll go ahead and hit install. The other reason is it it's not included in the file, so it it takes a while for it to download and would add another 20 minutes to this video. So rather than to put you through that, um, I'll keep it separate. So go ahead and hit next. Um, if you haven't already uh, got this SolarWinds standard tool set, um, you can get a free copy. It's a $200 value with a lot of network tools. Um, if you don't already have it, I would click yes and register and get and download it. It's a pretty cool tool. If you, if you do have it, just click no. I already have it, so I'm going to hit no next. And let's go ahead and start GNS3. So when GNS3 starts up, <clears throat> takes you to that uh, thank you splash screen for installing GNS3. Uh, so I'll close that. Yeah, I don't think we need any of this stuff anymore. Uh, I'll leave this open because we'll need it in a minute. So um, Basically, what you want to do at this point is set your server to local Genus 3 VM. And the reason for that is uh, if you do that, it integrates Dynamips, IOU, VPCS, and QEM um, all in one server versus before you had multiple servers. Um, you had the local uh, loopback server, and then you had the, the virtual box server and all these different servers um, but now it's integrated uh, within um, VMware so so leave it as that um, you could check this so that way you don't get this every time you open it and hit next um, so they recommend virtual box which I do too because or excuse me VMware which I do too because virtual box is very buggy with uh, 1.4 for some reason um, it went downhill now I don't know if they fixed the bugs but I used it in 1.4.0 and gave up on it so <laughs> it was that bad but we'll go ahead and use VMware because I know that works and you don't have to change anything in here um, if you have a beefier system than I do you can up your your CPU cores if you have a, multi, a lot more processors or more RAM you could change that but I'm going to leave that so go ahead and hit next now it's going to start our VM that we uploaded into uh, VMware for the first time so the uh, gecko with the long tongue will come up in a second 
So his tongue grows as he boots. <laughs> so he's trying to get a fly over here or something. I don't know. Anyways, um, so once you get to this screen, it's fully up. And um, if you do get this error, do, do not worry. Go ahead and hit uh, OK. Um, and it still it still works. Um, what I would do is uh, just go ahead and hit uh, cancel to this and uh, minimize this. And now let's go and continue. It, it will work. We just have to. Uh, uh, <laughs> it may need to be rebooted this uh, for the first time. Uh, I got that the very first time I installed it, and um, uh, the, after I rebooted it, it, it went away. So I don't know if that's a bug, but it never came back, so I'm not reporting it. So let's go ahead and um, upload our IOU uh, images, because uh, we have to do that. So we'll we go into this 192.168.211.128 uh, colon 8000 and once you're in there you go into upload images and backup and it brings you to this page and from there um, this page wouldn't even come up if uh, this wasn't working so, so if you don't get this page you know that you may have to reboot it and restart GNS3, um, but I think we're good. So let's first of all, we have to load our license in two places, and I'll show you. This is the first place for the IOU. So we've got to upload it into here, and that was in the images root, open, upload. Okay, now it's in here. Okay, so now let's upload our IOU images because this is the way you do it. So we're going to do the L2 uh, uh, switch first, which is pretty quick. There it is. Not as quick as the license, but quicker than L3, as you'll see in a second. L3 takes uh, about two or three times as long as L2 because it's a bigger file. Okay, so now we got both of them up there. So we can effectively close this. All right, so basically now the setup wizard's asking, do you want to add virtual machines now? You can either finish and do it later or, or cancel and do it, you know. Actually, I'll show you how it's done. So you go ahead and you check the ones you want to do. So we'll do an iOS router, and which is Dynamips, and a, IOU router uh, for the iOS over Unix. There are, like I said, the QEMU virtual machine, which you can add, which is that ASAV, or uh, there's there's other ones too. There's iOS V, there's iOS X something or other. Um, there's a, there's other various ones, and then there's the uh, virtual box. Um, and VM virtual machines. So you can add like if you have a, a Linux um, virtual machine you can add that in here too and throw that on the topology as a PC instead of using uh, the VPCS or virtual PCs. So let's go ahead and hit finish to uh, install a iOS uh, router. So <clears throat> now you'll see there's these server types. You can you have three options. You can run the iOS on a remote computer, like say a server, like if you have multiple PCs and you're on your network and you want to share the iOSs, um, you can do that or you can run them from within the GNS3 VM uh, that we have in here. Um, uh, or run the iOS on your local computer. Um, I recommend the GNS3 VM only because it it's local, but yet you can make copies of it and um, back it up. So you you know if it fails, you have a backup. So and you're not 
having to worry about the network being down when you you know for this remote computer so let's go ahead and hit next and now it wants you to to pick the iOS image file so we'll hit browse and we gotta we don't have the paths in I'll show you where those paths are in a minute to get to these um, so it's on C GNS3 images iOS I'm gonna load the 7200 series router <clears throat> excuse me because the um, 7200 series is the only one of the Dynamips router line that uses uh, one uh, 15.x um, all the others are 12 dot something um, so if you you know if you're doing uh, CCMP you'll want the 7200 um, versus these others you can probably get away with these for CCNA but for CCMP um, you need to know the the uh, command set of the uh, the uh, like I said the 15.x so we'll go ahead and open that and that installs it inside the, the VM uh, that we just saw earlier so that's how it gets installed so I hit next uh, you don't have to do anything in here um, you can change platforms but why because it's a 7200 so go and hit next um, it auto populates the default RAM uh, if you want to double check it you can click here and it'll take you to a Cisco website where you can plug in your iOS um, file name and it'll tell you what the default RAM is for it um, but that's correct so I know that so I'll go ahead and hit next um, and here are the slots for your network adapters uh, this is the default uh, fast Ethernet I usually change this to two fast Ethernet so you get at least two there and then I add a couple more uh, so that way you can tie four routers together and I also do serial because I'm old school <laughs> so we'll go and leave that uh, and you could have more but keep in mind the more you put the more memory and the more CPU utilization it's taken so um, anyways uh, as you add m multiple routers so I'll go ahead and hit next this is the idle PC finder um, basically uh, you want to click this and uh, it's going to compute the I idle PC values of your PC uh, to find the very best value for your processor uh, so that it doesn't use uh, the maximum amount of your processor it, it actually uh, finds the most um, what's the word the most efficient uh, va uh, processor um, value so that way it uses the least amount for your PC and every PC is different so this is the value uh, that it found again yours will be different than mine because it's a different PC and every even if you install this on the same exact same model on a different PC it will it'll probably be different so we'll go and hit finish to that to finish installing that now it wants to install the IOU device um, again run this IOU from within the VM because you have to <laughs> so uh, that's the purpose of the VM so we'll go and hit next um, it auto populates the existing image um, that we uploaded I think you can add it right here but I haven't tried that yet so I'm going to do the layer 2 first which is the switch so in the name I usually give it IOU Oop. if I could type IOU underscore L2 and then when you do L3 just make it L3 or switch and router whatever you want to call it um, so that brings you into the preferences page um, so let's close it let's go and hit OK to this just to close out of that um, wizard so we can get back to this page so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel to the new project um, that, that comes up every time you load GNS3 uh, from now on it will come up uh, and basically it's just asking if you want to start a new project open an old project or look at a previously opened project 
and so just to give you a background um, these icons up here um, allow you to start it uh, pause it stop uh, your topology um, basically here's your router switches PCs you know ASA whatever security devices uh, you can look at all of them right here and it shows all the devices that's the one I usually use um, basically uh, this is your topology so you probably want to go full screen so you get a better <laughs> better uh, view of it and then once uh, once you have this open you can drag um, whatever devices you want over to it but before we do that we still got a few more preferences that we got to do so to start with let's change these to, to the C genus 3 and remember we're doing projects right now so hit projects select folder and let's go ahead and add these paths in real quick just to continue I'll show you that in a second so images next and then C oops C genus 3 and this is symbols select folder and configs next all right, so now we got all those paths. Oops. Yeah, we didn't want that. So just delete that if that happens. So go ahead and hit apply to that. Now, one thing I wanted to show you was the different styles. This is the classic style. Um, there's also the legacy style, which looks slightly different. Um, that's like the old, old GNS3, the, you know. Um, like the original genus 3 and then there's this charcoal I like the charcoal because as you can see it uses a light gray instead of a white which is better on your monitor and better on your eyes <laughs> in my opinion so I'm gonna leave it there um, you wanna go into console applications and I usually set mine to super putty but there's all these other types of uh, CRT type uh, programs uh, like TerraTerm, Telnet, all these various putty, um, but I, but the best one is this Super Putty as far as free. Um, if you use this Super Putty, it gives you tabs as you'll see in a minute. So we'll go and hit OK to that. So both of these should be set to Super Putty. Um, if you have uh, Secure CRT, by all means use it. Um, it's just it's 100 bucks, and not everybody has it. Um, so VNC, actually I think it's 150 now. Um, so topology view, I do check this draw a rectangle when the item is selected so it's easy to know which one is the selected device on your topology. Um, I don't do anything on miscellaneous. Uh, enable experimental features. Dangerous! Uh, requires restart. <laughs> I like when they put dangerous because it's like uh, I'm gonna click it you know <laughs> I'm just kidding so anyways so go ahead and hit apply to that um, uh, under the server in the old GNS3 I should say 1.3x you had to set your virtual box um, host bindings to 1.2 2.168.56.1 which you can still do if you want to use VirtualBox but like I said it's buggy um, and then you had to add a remote server to the VirtualBox you don't have to do anything because it's now it's all integrated so just leave that alone um, you may have to do something with virtual servers at some point but um, I, it, it works without it so unless you find a problem um, leave it um, packet capture this is to set up Wireshark within Genus 3 if you want to make changes to uh, the capture reader command or whatnot I usually leave that alone uh, VPCS uh, is the settings for that virtual PCs uh, Dynamips you don't need to do anything in here per se uh, not that I'm aware of um, iOS routers this shows the one we just installed and all the information about it uh, including the slots um, this is the iOS on Unix 
um, section. Now in here we definitely need to place that IOURC license path in here. So we browse to that. So go C, Genus 3, uh, Images, and there it is. So you want to apply that because if you don't put it right here and don't have it in, uploaded into the VM, it won't work. So um, if you get that, if you get a, yeah, a red error down here, chances are it might be that. If it's a, if 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 it says that the file is not um, is incorrect or has uh, another error, it may be that you need a new license file. Chances are, if you're going from 1.3 um, to this, you're going to need a new license file. So you'll want to get a new one. So anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and add um, the L3 image. Again, it, it works similar to the other, um, the wizard. So I'll go ahead and put IOU underscore L3. Finish. All right, and then go and apply that. Uh, again, here's a QEMU VMs. You can go new just to see what what types there are. There's this IOS V, VL2, XRV, and even though it says 8.2 or 4.2, when I added it, I got an error down here saying to use the AI ASAV. Um, which I think is going to be a VMware or a VirtualBox uh, image of some sort because it's not listed in here. And then you get the IDS. So we'll go ahead and hit cancel that. Uh, and again, uh, VirtualBox you can add in here. Same with VMware. So that's pretty much it for preferences. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit OK. And let's go ahead and really quickly um, drag our 7200 router over here and you left click to drag drag our switch and our IOU router and then it's wired together so to, you click here to wire click on the device and it brings up the available uh, obviously you can't go serial to Ethernet but you go fast Ethernet to, seri uh, to regular Ethernet now in the past if you didn't have, if uh, with, uh, or I should say with VirtualBox, if you didn't set your local server right, you get an error and wouldn't be allowed to connect the Dynamips to um, IOU. So that's that's what the benefit of I feel of VMware is. So we'll go and oops, yeah, you can install to itself. So. So we got those on there. So this is just a basic topology. Um, as you can see, they're all off as because the, they're red. And remember, red is this is to stop, this is this to spin, and this is to start. So let's go ahead and start them. So now they're all green, and you can see it right here as well. Um, now we want to console in because you can't really see anything other than that. So to do so, you click here, and you'll probably get an error which we just did from Super Putty uh, saying Super Putty has stopped working. Uh, that is a common error and uh, the workaround is currently and hopefully they get this fixed in newer versions by using uh, the newer version of Super Putty or at least get this this version fixed is see how we got IOU2 that which is this guy but we don't have R1 or to add it to here just double click on it okay so we got R1 now let's add IOU1 so um, basically and you could drag these tabs around uh, if you want a putty window you could drag it out here <laughs> or you could drag I mean it's kind of a pain you got to get it back on there. You gotta get it just so. The easiest way is to close out of it and reopen it. There you go. So now we got our this is our Dynamips router. This is our IOU 
believe, switch. Yes, our IOU switch and our IOU router. Um, to show, to prove to you, it is definitely IOU or iOS on Unix. Uh, we'll do a show ver. And as you can see, it says Linux, <laughs> which you don't normally see um, uh, by going to, uh, uh, like I said, one of the Dynamips uh, or one of the original uh, iOSs for the original GNS3. It would always give a different uh, normal uh, version <laughs> without Linux in it. So, because you see it's experimental. Um, so anyways, uh, it's got 16 Ethernet uh, interfaces. Again, it's L2, so you can um, set it up, uh, set up multiple uh, uh, copies of it uh, to do layer two switching, as well as layer, th layer three. Now, I believe if I do a show for on here, if I could spell, um you'll see we go down it's got eight ethernet and eight serial um now to me the serial tells me it's a it's a router but i'm not a hundred percent whether you can set this up as a layer three switch or if it's just a router um uh, to where it can do um you know other layer three switching type activities um, different from a regular router I should say <laughs> like this guy over here um, so anyways uh, that's pretty much in a nutshell how this works um, basically other than that the the only thing I do is if you want to modify super putty you can do it by going to tools options but, um, and you, you can go in here and set these options or create shortcuts uh, like next tab you can put the left arrow or right arrow or whatever um, and also these options here but if you don't put this path which says required for both of these lines um, it won't work and if you copy and paste it in it doesn't seem to work so the best way to do it is to browse to it and that is C program files genus 3 so we'll go and hit open and then that populates this this one's slightly different it brings this one up where you gotta drill down to it so uh, go into program files find genus 3 click it and then click OK once you have those in there then you can save uh, any of these options like if you want to change the font or whatever um, you can so anyways that's pretty much it in a nutshell on how to install this version of genus 3 how to get IOU up on it and um, hopefully um, in the future I personally do not have a copy because I don't normally do security um, of the ASA um, V but um, hopefully somebody else or if I get it if I do decide to get it um, I'll, I'll uh, do a video on it but for now uh, I think other people may be able to help you to get uh, one of those other QEMU uh, VMs loaded so I don't think it would be that much different than loading one of these um, VM images because um, I kind of standardized it in 1.4.0 and up but uh, but I think it should be pretty simple or at least similar so anyways uh, enjoy and uh, hopefully this has been helpful if it has please give me a thumbs up and if you have any comments uh, please be kind and uh, leave me one down below um, and uh, please spread the word <laughs> thank you take care